welcome to the hindu news analysis by shankar as academy the news articles along with the page numbers are displayed here for your reference the pdf link of the handy to notes and the time stamping of the news articles is given in the description box as well as in the comment section now let us start our today's news analysis this news article talks about the indian data relay satellite system which is under development by isro so in this context we'll be discussing more about the concept of a relay satellite then about id rss then its need for gaganyaan and for other low earth orbit satellites the syllabus relevant for the analysis of this news article he is highlighted here for your reference now let us try to understand the concept of a relay satellite which is similar to a relay race in which runners pass the baton to the next runner to run the next leg of the race similarly the relay satellite works like relay race but with satellites that is with source satellite then with the relay satellite then to the ground station kindly notice that the satellites in orbit cannot pass their information to the ground stations if the satellite does not have a clear view of the ground station Therefore a relay satellite serves as a way to pass the satellite's information to the ground station now let us try to understand this concept with the help of this figure that is with the example of the tracking on data relay satellite of nasa which is able to forward information from the international space station or the hubble space telescope to the appropriate ground station So in this picture this tracking and data relay satellite will always have a clear view with the ground station and have a two way communication with ground station as well as source satellites so in this picture the source satellites are hubble space telescope and international space station here the tdrs can also send information from the ground to the satellite to command the satellite what to do that is to take a picture or to turn on a sensor or turn off a sensor or send stored data to the ground station now if you look at the news article which says that india has started working on its relay satellite series that is indian data relay satellite system and the idrss is planned to track and be constantly in touch with indian satellites especially those in low earth orbits now we'll see the different types of orbits that is low earth orbit then medium earth orbit and high earth orbits these orbits are based on their altitudes that is in case of low earth orbit the altitude is about from 160 km to about 2000 km then in case of medium earth orbit the altitude varies from 2000 km to 36000 km from the surface of the earth then the orbit beyond 36000 km is known as high earth orbits most of the scientific and weather satellites are placed in low earth orbits whereas communication satellites are placed at an altitude of 36000 km from the surface of the earth the satellites which are placed in low earth orbits are very near to the earth or the satellite height is very less the satellites which are placed in low earth orbits have limited coverage of the surface of the earth because their altitude from the surface of the earth is limited therefore idrss can help these satellites to have a communication with the ground stations always now if you look at the news article which mentions that the indian space research organization has several advanced low earth orbit missions such as space docking then space station as well as distant expeditions to moon then to mars as well as mission to venus so idrss will be helpful in monitoring these launches the first beneficiary would be the prospective crew members of the gaganyaan mission of 2022 who can be fully and continuously in touch with mission control throughout their travel this means that idrss would make gaganyaan 100% visible so that it will help in quick decision making in case of any exigencies kindly notice that without data relay satellites isro would have to create a large number of ground stations or hire them globally so that spacecraft would be visible all the time know that gaganyaan mission is the first human space mission that is indigenously developed by india and if gaganyaan mission is successful it will make india the fourth nation in the world to launch a human space flight mission The nations which are already launched human space flight missions are United States, Russia and China. The Gaganyaan mission aims to send a three member crew to space for a period of 5 to 7 days and the spacecraft will be placed in a low earth orbit of at a height of 300 to 400 km from the surface of the earth. ISRO has already started a human space flight center that is HSFC in Bangalore. 
It will be responsible for the implementation of Gaganyaan mission which involves end to end mission planning then development of engineering systems for crew survival in space and then crew selection and the training aspects kindly notice that JSLV Mark 3 would be launching Gaganyaan mission which is a three stage heavy lift vehicle if you look at the news article it says that the work on the two IDRS satellites planned initially has already begun the first of them will be sent towards the end of 2020 then the second IDRS satellite will be launched in 2021 so after launching these two satellites they will offer near total tracking then sending and receiving of information from the crew always know that IDRS satellites would be launched to geostationary orbits using geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle that is these satellites will be placed approximately at an altitude of 36000 kilometers from the surface of the earth kindly notice that these idrs satellites would be launched to geostationary orbits using the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle and these satellites will be placed at an altitude of about 36000 kilometers above the equator of earth the satellite will have rotational period of 24 hours because it is placed in geostationary orbit so with reference to ground these satellites would appear as motionless satellites in the fixed position in the sky therefore these idrs satellites will have communication with the ground stations always that is 24 by 7 so in the context of this news article we discussed the concept of a relay satellite then about idrs then it's need for gaganyaan and for other low earth orbit satellites with this we have come to the end of analysis of this news article the displayed practice question will be discussed at the end of the session now let us proceed to the next news article analysis this article discusses about why tulu and other deserving languages should be included in eighth schedule of indian constitution so in this context let us see about this eighth schedule then the reasons discussed by the author to include tulu and other languages in this eighth schedule and finally we shall see the ule proclamation that is discussed in this editorial the syllabus relevant for the analysis of this news article is highlighted here for your reference so what is this eighth schedule to know this you need to know about articles 343 and 351 of indian constitution that is article 343 tells that the official language of the union shall be hindi written in devanagari script then article 351 of the indian constitution provides that it shall be the duty of the union to promote the spread of hindi language so that hindi may serve as a medium of expression for all the elements of the composite culture of india this article also said that hindi needs to be enriched by absorbing certain forms then certain styles and expressions that are used in hindustani and in the other languages of india that are specified in the eighth schedule of indian constitution kindly know that a resolution was adopted in 1968 in both the houses of the parliament and this resolution is known as the official language resolution of 1968 so as per this resolution the parliament has resolved that in the interest of the educational and cultural advancement of the country the government of india shall take necessary measures for the full development of languages which are mentioned in this eighth schedule so as per this resolution the government suggested upsc that all the languages included in the eighth schedule of the indian constitution and english shall be permitted as alternative media or medium to appear for the all india and higher central services examinations so as of now a candidate can appear for such exams in any of the languages mentioned in the eighth schedule so this is the importance of this eighth schedule so at present there are 22 languages which are included in this eighth schedule the list of 22 languages is given here for your reference of these 22 languages 14 were initially included in the constitution then sindhi was added in 1967 then three more languages were included in 1992 and these languages are konkani manipuri and nepali then in 2004 four more languages that is bodo dogri maithili and santali languages were added in this eighth schedule now as per ministry of home affairs it reported that there are demands for inclusion of about 38 languages in the eighth schedule of the constitution and one such language is tulu now we'll see about tulu which is a dravidian language 
If you look at this diagram, you can see the concentration of Tulu speaking people that is in two coastal districts of Karnataka which are Dakshin Kannada and UDP districts and also in the northern portion of Kasargo district of Kerala. Now, in this editorial, the author has mentioned the need to include Tulu and other deserving languages in the 8th schedule. The author has quoted that article 29 of Indian constitution which provides that a section of citizens having a distinct language, script or culture have the right to conserve the same. He tells that both the state and citizens have an equal responsibility to conserve the distinct language, script and culture of these people. So this is the reason why the author has emphasized that the state, that is the central government, should include Tulu in the 8th schedule. Next the author tells that languages with less number of speakers like Sanskrit and Manipuri have been included in the 8th schedule whereas languages with more speakers like Tulu, Bili, Gondi, Kasi etc are not included in the 8th schedule. So the author tells that Tulu is a textbook example of linguistic discrimination. The author has quoted a book written by Robert Cadwell who did research on Dravidian languages. So in this book Robert Cadwell has called Tulu as one of the most highly developed languages of the Dravidian family. So the author tells that Tulu must be protected under 8th schedule. Then finally the author has said that India needs to learn from Yulu proclamation which was made by UNESCO in 2018 at Changsha in China. This proclamation is regarding the protection and promotion of linguistic diversity in the world. Yulu proclamation has recognized that the protection and promotion of linguistic diversity is crucial for the achievement of the sustainable development goals and it requires proactive and accountable participation of all sectors of the international community. This proclamation also recognized that it is essential to combine the protection and promotion of linguistic diversity with the development of science and technology. So in this context, the author suggests that India has a lot to learn from the ELU proclamation. Therefore, Tulu and other deserving languages should be included in the 8th schedule of the Indian constitution. So if they are included, then it will promote social inclusion and also promote national integration. So to conclude this editorial, we have seen about 8th schedule, then about articles 343 and article 351. Then about the points discussed by the author to include Tulu and other deserving languages in the 8th schedule. And finally we saw about Yulu proclamation which was made by the UNESCO in 2018. So with this we have come to the end of analysis of this news article. The displayed practice question will be discussed at the end of the session. Now let us proceed to the analysis of next news article. This discussion is based on the recent escalations of tensions in the Middle East. In this regard, there are many news articles and editorials which discusses about what actually happened and what are the consequences of the recent developments. The syllabus relevant for the analysis of these news articles is highlighted here for your reference. Now, as you would have heard that just a few days back, that is in Baghdad, which is the capital city of Iraq, two important people from Iran and Iraq were assassinated by American forces using a drone attack. One person who was killed in the attack was Qasem Soleimani who was the commander of the powerful Quads forces of Iran. He was visiting Iraq on the invitation of Iraqi Prime Minister when he was killed. The second person who was killed was Abu Mahdi al mohandes He was the deputy commander of the Popular Mobilization Forces which is an umbrella organization of several Iraqi Shia militias. This was formed in 2014 and this organization is understood as a part of Iraqi army. Now, as per the editorials, Suleimani and al mohandes were partners in the fight against the terrorist organization of Islamic State, that is ISIS. This attack has been carried out after the authorization of US president by the US troops which are present in Iraq. Know that US troops were initially invited by the Iraqi government to fight against the Islamic State. We have discussed about the trial of events that led to this assassination and about what could be possible global impacts of this assassination 
and also about India's reaction in this regard on our 4th January Hindu news analysis video. You can refer this video for better understanding. Today we will see the actual consequences and global impact of this assassination. These assassinations were seen as a declaration of war by America on Iraq and Iran. Know that in response to these assassinations, the supreme leader of Iran noted that a harsh retaliation is waiting. Further, the Iraqi Prime Minister said that the killing was an act of aggression against Iraq that would trigger a large scale war. This can be seen in the context of the resolution adopted by the UN General Assembly. So, as per this resolution, aggression is defined as the use of armed forces by a state against the sovereignty, territorial integrity or political independence of another state or it can also be defined as or in any other manner that is inconsistent with the Charter of the United Nations. So that is why Iraqi Prime Minister is calling this attack as an act of aggression. So as a result of this, the Iraqi parliament demanded America out, Baghdad remains free. So for this purpose, the Iraqi parliament voted to expel thousands of US troops that are stationed in Iraq. They also decided to deny the troops the access to Iraq's airspace, land or water. Now, here you should note that Iraq is an ally of US. Also, Iraq is crucial ally for US in the war against terrorism in West Asia. Now, because of this attack, Iraqis have reached to a point where they had to choose between Iran and USA. Now, since the Iraqi parliament voted to expel the US troops, it is understood that Iraq picked its powerful neighbor Iran as its ally. If the US troops are forced to pull out, it will impose harsh sanctions on Iraq which will be worse than that of sanctions imposed on Iran. So this approach not only violates Iraq's sovereignty, it also escalates the situation to a three corn crisis that involves America, then Iraq and Iran. So this is one of the consequences. Then after this another consequence is that the Iraqi Prime Minister to make a formal complaint to the United Nations against the United States. The reason to initiate the formal complaint is that US has done some serious violations and US also has breached the Iraqi sovereignty. So in this regard the author of this editorial is noting that it is likely that China and Russia will table a resolution at the United Nations that calls for calm in the region on one hand and also criticizes the United States on the other hand. But as we know that if such a move is made by Russia and China then it will be certainly blocked by the America. This is because US is one of the permanent members of the United Nations. Therefore, these five countries including United States of America who are the permanent members of United Nations were granted a special voting power at the United Nations Security Council which is known as the right to veto. If any one of the five permanent members cast a negative vote in the 15 member Security Council then the resolution or decision would not be approved. So in this manner US will exercise its veto power. The next consequence is the possible retaliation by pro-Iranian groups across the region that is from Hezbollah group of Lebanon to Afghanistan. This is because this attack was not seen as an attack on Iran but it was seen as the attack on Iraq and also attack on the pro-Iranian movements from Lebanon to Afghanistan. The next consequence is that which is also being tried to be avoided by many governments and this consequence is nothing but what. So in this context war is also possible because Commander Soleimani's assassination awakened the patriotism among the Iran people. So people are asking for revenge. Even a sign of war in the holy city of Qom in Iran that is a red flag was flown on the dome of a significant mosque. This red flag signifies that Iran is prepared for a long war. Then a Hezbollah leader also made a statement in this regard in support of war. He stated that Soleimani's assassination is a turning point in the history of the region, not just in the history of Iran or Iraq. He also stated that this attack is the start of a new American war in the region. So we can say that there is a possibility of war. 
Then the next consequence is that United States does not have any support on the international stage regarding this matter. This is because the United States allies were shocked to see that the US administration brazenly, that is without shame, killed a senior Iranian official and an Iraqi political leader. In addition to this, Mr. Trump even tweeted that the United States would target and strike about 52 Iranian sites, including cultural ones. So if you see that targeting and attacking cultural sites is an immoral war crime. So because of this statement by Mr. Trump, again, United States of America is losing support in the international stage. Then the next consequence is the deepened anxieties among the isolated regional allies of United States, that is Israel and Saudi Arabia. Know that already these two countries are isolated in the region and further this attack has increased their isolation. This is because America invaded Iraq and carried out an illegal war in 2003. Even America justified this invasion by saying that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction that threaten the security of the region. So this situation provided a massive advantage to Iran not only in Iraq but also across the region. So this increasing power of Iran terrified Israel and Saudi Arabia who are the adversaries of Iran. So that is why it is said that this attack has further weakened the strategic position of American allies. So these are certain consequences which are mentioned in these two editorials. Now we'll see the other news articles. These news articles mentions the global impact of this disturbed situation of Middle East. The first and foremost expected impact is the rise in oil prices. As expected that oil prices jumped by about 1%. So, at present, Brent crude oil price is above $70 a barrel. Then there is a possible impact on oil supplies also. It is because the West Asia region accounts for nearly half of the world's oil production and about one-fifth of the world's oil shipments that passes through Strait of Hormuz. It is mentioned that there is a possibility that Iran might block this Strait of Hormuz. If this happens, then the oil supply will be cut off, which will further increase oil prices. But according to experts, this is unlikely to happen because USA has threatened Iraq that it will impose severe sanctions. Know that Iraq is the second largest producer in the organization of the petroleum export countries, that is OPEC nations. Now, if you look at one of the news articles, that is impacts felt in India. As a result of this, the rupee depreciated to 72 rupees against the US dollar. Then the Sensex also suffered its worst fall in a year. This happened because the crude oil prices are rising. So this situation has created fears of inflation and worries over the fiscal deficit in our country. In addition to this, that is with increasing Brent crude oil prices, gold prices has also increased to its highest, which is the highest in almost 7 years according to the news article. So because of this, fiscal deficit concern will arise again as these two commodities are major imports of India. So government may need to spend more on these commodities. Therefore, Indian government will tend to restrict its other spendings and if it does so, then it could limit the economic growth in the medium term. So in this scenario, the Reserve Bank of India would be compelled to cut interest rates so that there is enough liquidity in the economy. So if the above mentioned consequences are to be avoided and the global impacts has to be reduced, then America should withdraw its troops without further creating any problem and then the international entities such as United Nations can interfere. Even Europe can play a significant role in this regard because European Union has good ties with both America as well as Iran. So Europe should use its diplomatic channels to hold back Mr. Trump and his administration from doing any further reckless actions. And also Europe should pacify or calm down Iran so that an all-out war can be prevented. So in this context, we have discussed the recent escalations of tensions in the Middle East. That is about what actually happened and what are the consequences of these tensions. With this, we have come to the end of analysis of these news articles. The displayed practice question will be discussed at the end of the session. Now let us proceed to the next news article analysis.
this article says icor plans innovation fund to help farmers so in this contest we'll be discussing about farmers innovation fund then about innovation centers and indian council of agricultural research the syllabus relevant for the analysis of this news article is highlighted here for your reference know that the farmer science congress was inaugurated as a part of the ongoing 107th edition of indian science congress at university of agricultural sciences at bangalore in karnataka the indian science congress is organized under the theme of science and technology for rural development that is rural development through the application of science and technology so as part of indian science congress former science congress was also organized and around 120 innovative farmers from across the country or participated and they also showcased their products see it is the first time in the history of indian science congress that a farmer centric event has been organized in order to encourage farmers innovation and their scientific validity so during the farmer science congress various themes that is ranging from farmers innovation on integrated agriculture and entrepreneurship for doubling farmers income then on climate change biodiversity conservation ecosystem services and farmers empowerment to agrarian distress rural bio entrepreneurship and also policy issues were discussed this news article also mentions that while inaugurating the farmers science congress the director of indian council of agricultural research informed that farmers innovation fund and innovation centers will be set up in the financial year of 2022-21 so in this context while inaugurating the farmers science congress under the indian science congress the director of indian council of agriculture research informed that farmers innovation fund and innovation centers will be set up in the financial year 2021 and these innovation centers will be set up under the national agricultural research system to encourage innovations made by progressive farmers so in this context let us know about farmers innovation fund innovation center and icar now we'll see about farmers innovation fund this fund will be created under the national agriculture research system that is nars which is one of the largest in the world under the department of agriculture research and education in the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare this fund will be dedicated fund for farmers innovation so creation of this fund has assumed significance because in our country around 55% of country's population is directly or indirectly connected to agriculture and about 80% of indian farmers are small and marginal farmers So this new farmers initiative will support farmers financially for their innovation and also enables market linking facilities. This fund will also encourage farmers to innovate and create modern tools and systems of farming. Therefore as part of this system an innovation center in Delhi would be established. So at this center the innovations of farmers would be scientifically validated and farmers would also be allowed to pursue their research. so we can say that for this innovation fund there are two objectives the first one is that to link farmers and farming with science and the second is to ensure that they form practices or scientific basis so these objectives promotes scientific temper among the farmers now we'll see about ica that is indian council of agricultural research and also about national agriculture research system know that indian national agriculture research system is one of the largest agriculture research systems in the world it comprises mainly two streams that is ica at the national level and the agricultural universities at the state level so at present the nars system has about 101 ica institutes and about 71 agriculture universities and about 716 krishi vigyan kendras now let us know about central level agriculture research organization that is indian council of agriculture research which is an autonomous organization under the department of agriculture research and education in the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare It was established in 1929 as a registered society under the Societies Registration Act of 1860. So initially it is known as the Imperial Council of Agriculture Research then after independence the council was renamed as the Indian Council of Agriculture Research that is ICAR with its headquarters at New Delhi. 
the council has the minister for agriculture as its president and the minister of state for agriculture as its vice president the indian council of agriculture research is the apex body for coordinating guiding and managing research and education in agriculture including horticulture fisheries and animal sciences in the country the ico serves various categories of stakeholders such as farmers students entrepreneurs researchers and others who are interested in agriculture and its allied sectors so this is all about icar now we'll see about krishi vigyan kendras krishi vigyan kendras simply mean farm science centers these are agriculture extension centers for research and farmers education know that kvk is also an integral part of the national agriculture research system it aims at assessment of location specific technology modules in agriculture and allied sectors the kvk scheme is 100% financed by the government of india these kvks are sanctioned to agriculture universities icar institutes and other related government reports including non government organizations who are working in agriculture and its allied sectors these kvks have been functioning as knowledge and resource center of agriculture technology supporting initiatives of public private and voluntary sector and also for improving the agriculture economy and also linking the nars with extension system including farmers kvks also conduct extension programs including training of farmers through specific training programs developed by kvks on improved technologies related to agriculture and its allied fields these programs benefit the farmers in terms of increased crop production as well as farm income so this is all about kvks now if you look at the news article it also mentions that some of the other initiatives taken by icar that is icar is developing nano fertilizers and nano pesticides to promote organic farming and to reduce the use of pesticides and fertilizers kindly notice that aria that is attracting and retaining youth in agriculture is also being implemented by icar this program aims to improve rural bio economy and to attract youth into agriculture so in this context we have discussed about farmer science congress then about farmers innovation fund then about national agriculture research system then about icar and kvks with this we have come to the end of analysis of this news article the displayed practice question will be discussed at the end of this session now let us start our practice question session consider the following statements with reference to relay satellites they have given two statements and they have to choose correct statements statement 1 says that they serve as a way to pass the satellites information to the ground station and vice versa then second statement says tracking and data relay satellite system is india's indigenous relay satellite system now if you look at the concept of relay satellite system which is similar to relay race in which runners pass the baton to the next runner to run the next leg of the race so we can say that relay satellite system passes information or transfer the data between the source satellite and the ground station therefore the relay satellite system works as a two way communication system with ground station and with source satellite the relay satellite system will have direct view of ground station always the satellites in orbit cannot pass their information to the ground stations if the satellites does not have a clear view of the ground station so a relay satellite system serves as a way to pass the satellites information between ground station and source satellite so given statement 1 is correct statement now if you look at the second statement it says that tracking and data relay satellite system is india's indigenous relay satellite system kindly know that the tracking and data relay satellite that is tdrs is nasa's relay satellite system the tdrs is able to forward information from the international space station or the hubble space telescope to the appropriate ground stations so in this context isro is also developing relay satellite system for india that is indian data relay satellite system this system will consist of two satellites the first satellite under id rss is expected to be sent by the end of 2020 and the second satellite is expected to be launched in 2021 these satellites would be launched by 
GSLV that is geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle and IDRSS satellites are expected to be placed in geostationary orbit which is about 36000 kilometers above its equator and these satellites will follow its rotation so this is about IDRSS satellite system of ISRO therefore if you look at second statement it is given as India's indigenous relay satellite system so second statement is incorrect so for this question option A one only is the correct option now look at this question this question is based on 8th schedule of Indian constitution they have given four languages that is Konkani, Gondi, Santali, Dogri and you have to choose the correct answer based on the languages which are included in 8th schedule of the Indian constitution so for this question kindly notice that in the original constitution 14 languages were included in the 8th schedule then in 1967 Sindhi was included then in 1992 three more languages were included and these languages include Konkani, Manipuri and Nepali. Again in 2004, four more languages were included and these languages include Bodo, Dogri, Maithali and Santali. So at present there are 22 languages in 8th schedule of Indian constitution. These 22 languages are Assamese, Bengali, Gujarati, Hindi, Kannada, Kashmiri, Konkani, Malayalam, Manipuri, Marathi, Nepali, Odia, then Punjabi, then Sanskrit, Sindhi, Tamil, Telugu, Urdu, then Bodo, Santali, Maithali and Dogri. So we can say that Gondi is not included in 8th schedule at present. Kindly notice that English is also not included in 8th schedule of Indian constitution. So for this question option B that is 134 only is the correct option. Now consider the following statements they have given three statements and you have to choose incorrect statements. Statement 1 says that Iraq and Iran share border with each other and also with Turkey, Syria and Lebanon. Then second statement says that Tropic of Cancer passes through Iran and Iraq. Then third statement says that Strait of Hormuz links the Persian Gulf with Gulf of Aden. If you look at the first statement, first half of the statement is correct because Iran and Iraq share border with each other and second half of the statement is incorrect because if you look at the map Iraq shares border with Iran, Turkey, Syria, Jordan, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait whereas Iran shares border with Pakistan, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Caspian Sea, then Azerbaijan, then Armenia, then Turkey and Iraq. So first statement is incorrect statement. Now if you look at second statement it says that Tropic of Cancer passes through Iran and Iraq. This statement is incorrect because Iran and Iraq are located north of Tropic of Cancer. It passes through Egypt, then Saudi Arabia, then United Arab Emirates, then Oman, then India. Now if you look at the third statement it says that uh, Strait of Hormuz links the Persian Gulf with Gulf of Aden. This statement is also incorrect because it links the Persian Gulf with the Gulf of Oman but not with Gulf of Aden. Gulf of Aden is a natural sea link between the Red Sea and the Arabian Sea. The Gulf of Aden is situated between the coast of Arabia and the Horn of Africa. For this question you have to choose incorrect statements. So option D that is all the given statements are incorrect is the correct option for this question. Now consider this question. This question is with reference to National Agricultural Research System that is NARS in India. They have given two statements and you have to choose correct statements. Statement 1 says that it is under the Department of Agriculture, Cooperation and Farmers Welfare in the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. Then second statement says NARS constitutes ICAR institutes at the national level and the agricultural universities at the state level. The system engages in research and education relating to agriculture and allied areas. So for this question you have to choose correct statements. Kindly note is that NARS that is National Agriculture Research System is one of the largest research and education system in the world. It constitutes ICA that is Indian Council of Agricultural Research Institutes at the national level and then the agricultural universities at the state level. The NARS system engages in research and education related activities in the field of 
agriculture and its allied sectors. NARA system that is National Agriculture Research System comes under the Department of Agriculture Research and Education in the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. If you look at the first statement it is mentioned as it is under the Department of Agriculture. So first statement is incorrect statement whereas second statement is correct statement. Kindly know that the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare consists of two departments that is Department of Agriculture, Cooperation and Farmers Welfare and then Department of Agriculture Research and Education. So for this question you have to choose correct statements. So option B 2 only is the correct option for this question. Now look at this mains question which was asked in UPSC mains 2018 examination. The question says in what ways would the ongoing US Iran nuclear pact controversy affect the national interest of India? How should India respond to its situation? This is a 15 marks question and you have to write in 250 words. So for this question you can post your written answer in the comment section. The posted answers would be evaluated and suitable feedback will be given in the reasonable time frame. With this we have come to the end of analysis of today's Hindu news analysis. If you like the video please do like, share, comment and subscribe Shankar IS Academy YouTube channel for more updates. Thank you.